So let's start by considering the fugoid approximation. So I'm just going to draw another quick sketch of our complex plane. And as we learned when we looked at the spring mass damper system, when there's pairs of eigenvalues like this, they'll always have the same absolute value of frequency and the same damping value. This would be one at positive frequency and another at negative frequency. And the, the magnitude of this we will show to be approximately 2 times g over u naught, And there'll be eigenvalues there and there. So we assume for the fugoid pitch equilibrium. So this means delta m is 0. So that means delta q is approximately 0, and delta q dot is approximately 0. So the aircraft remains trimmed in pitch. That means the angle of attack does not change. So that means that delta w is simply, uh, which is u naught for small angles of attack times delta alpha, is 0. So with these assumptions, the motion looks something like this. The airplane here's xb w, while later the airplane's here with the xb and zb axis. So basically the aircraft is tracing a sinusoidal path around its intended straight flight path, but the aircraft is always pointing in the direction that it is moving. So the fugoid is governed by, under those simplifying assumptions, uh, the following two by two fugoid system. So it's delta u dot and delta theta dot are the only variables we haven't constrained to be zero. As given by x u minus g negative z u over u naught zero times delta u delta theta. And the eigenvalues of this matrix, this Jacobian matrix, are lambda 1, 2, are sigma fugoid plus or minus i omega fugoid. One, which is given by from uh, the characteristic equation, the solution of the characteristic equation of the Jacobian matrix, one half x u plus or minus the square root of x u squared plus four g z u over u naught. This is just from the quadratic formula. Now, to be able to actually calculate these eigenvalues, one would likely use numerical methods to get the stability derivatives. For So for the fugoid, we're talking about x u and z u. Uh, for example, you could use the vortex lattice method. And you're, you're going to do this using AVL in this course. However, we can actually obtain analytical approximations for these quantities, and we'll do that right now. So let's start um, by remembering that x u is just delta x over delta u, and because of our redefinition times 1 over m. So this is qs over m, 1 over not cxu star. And you'll see why this is cxu star and not cxu in a moment. And since from last time we had delta x over m was approximately equal to qs over m, 2 cx naught delta u over u naught plus cx alpha delta alpha plus cx q delta q bar 
plus cx delta thrust delta delta thrust then this term is zero because of our fixed stick assumption and under the fugoid assumption this is zero this term is zero um, sorry this is zero from our fixed stick assumption and both these terms are zero from the fugoid assumption. So from that, if we obtain that CX U star should be U naught times to CX naught one over U naught. And then the other three terms we can drop due to the simplified fugoid assumption, what we get is CXU star is just approximately 2 CX naught. Now again, for small alpha, the stability body axis transformation gives that CX naught is approximately negative CD naught for small alpha. So we can write that XU is just QS over M U naught times negative 2 CD naught. Now, there's sort of a tricky thing with notation here. Early in the course, we use CD naught to represent the trim state, or sorry, the zero lift drag of an aircraft. Whereas here in our stability analysis, remember that the subscript not represents the trim state. So this is the aircraft drag coefficient at the trim state, not the zero lift drag coefficient. We can do exactly the same process for ZU, which gives ZU is QS over MU infinity times CZU star, um, where CZU star is going to be approximately equal to 2CZ naught, and for small alpha, this gives us that CZU star is approximately negative 2CL naught in a trim state lift coefficient. So that ZU is QS over M U infinity times negative 2 CL naught. So now these stability derivatives, which appear in our fugoid mode, are simply given in terms of the lift and drag coefficients of our aircraft at the trim state. So we can then write out the fugoid frequency to be one half negative x u squared minus four g w over u naught. And now if we start plugging in everything that we just obtained, s m u naught. CD naught squared. The 4 comes because there was a factor of 2 and got decreased n squared plus 8 p over u naught q s over n u naught c l naught. And continuing to manipulate this, we get q s over m u naught CD naught squared plus 2g over u naught cl naught all times qs over m u naught the root of all that but for small angles of attack 
the lift must be approximately equal to the weight. So CL naught, we can say, is L over QS, which is MG over QS. So when we have QS over M, we can write that as G over CL naught. And using that, we can then write that the fugoid frequency is G over U naught squared times C D naught over C L naught squared plus two G over U naught squared all square root. So we can factor out the g over u naught, and we're left with the square root of c d naught over c l naught squared plus two. Now, for most aircraft, c l naught over c d naught is at least as the on the order of 10, so it's maybe between 8 and 20. What that means is that CD naught over CL naught, which is the inverse, squared is going to be much smaller than 1, right? If this is 10, this will be 0 0.01. If it's something more realistic for a modern airplane like 16, it'll be even smaller. So comparing that to this 2, we can approximate the fugoid frequency as simply the square root of 2 times g over u naught. And you can see that this is slow. And we'll plug some numbers into this to show just how slow this is very soon.